Hello everyone, we are now doing an overview of Mark chapter 13 in our daily growth book. This chapter talks about the end times. Jesus is finally discussing not only that he's going to die and suffer and, suffer and die and resurrect from the dead, but he's also describing him coming back and the end times. And it all starts with a conversation with the disciples. They just visited Jerusalem and they saw some magnificent, really beautiful buildings. And the building that they just came out of was the temple, the Jewish temple. And I believe this was the most beautiful building of all buildings in ancient, in ancient times. They built the building with gold plates. And they said this, on the outside of the building, when the sun would hit it, it would be so bright that it was al almost blinding. Also, the, the marble that they used was so white that people would look at it from a distance and it would look like it was snow. And the disciples described these buildings or even the temple. And this is what they said in, in Mark chapter 13, verse 1. As Jesus was leaving the temple that day, one of the disciples said, Teacher, look at these magnificent buildings. Look at the impressive stones and the walls. Jesus replied, Yes, look at these, look at these great buildings, but they will not, but but they will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Jesus is saying, look at the buildings. But one day, these buildings, including that temple, will be completely destroyed. And not one stone will be left. Now, this did happen 40 years later. After this prediction or this prophecy, um, the Jews revolted against the Romans. And the Romans came in and annihilated their city annihilated Jerusalem. Now, this is what happened. One of the soldiers went into the temple and began to burn the temple and it melted the gold. Now, when the gold was melted and melted within the cracks of the stones and in order to retrieve the gold, they would have to take every stone out. And that's how the Jerusalem temple was completely annihilated. Now, this is important to know because Jesus later in his chapter is going to talk about a, a, a statement called the abomination of desolation, or it's talking about a sacrilegious event. And this event is describing, in, is, is described in, in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation is when the Antichrist comes, and that's in the great tribulation, he's going to come, there's going to be a new temple rebuilt. And he is going to sit down in that temple and claim to be God. He's going to rule for three and a half years during the tribulation. It's going to be an awful time. A lot of suffering, a lot of pain, a lot of anguish. But it's also going to be a sign of Jesus' second coming. When he takes the throne, he's going to, it's going to be three and a half years of him ruling. And at the end of those three and a half years, there's going to be great tribulation. But at the end of those three and a half years, Jesus is coming back to overthrow Satan and sentence him, and sentence him to the lake of fire. And, and this is what's going to happen. It's going to be the end of the world. I love this. There's going to be an end. And Jesus is giving us some signs. Now, let's take a look. Now, the disciples is what they do. They said, tell us when all this will happen. What sign will show us that these things are about to be fulfilled? So the disciple says, so when is this going to happen? So Jesus be begins to tell them of some signs or, or, or he describes this as birth pains. These are things that are going to give, uh, they're going to be signs, sorrows right before I come back. And this is what he says, wars and threats of wars will happen. Now, we're living in a time and that there's wars and rumors of wars or threats of wars. Today, the main threat of war is, is Russia and Ukraine. Now, Russia's invading Ukraine and you hear about it every single day. But that just is one, one of the wars, but there's wars all over the world, even at this time. There will also be, he says, 
in verse 8, it says, There will be earthquakes and in many parts of the world as, as well as famines. And we're seeing earthquakes. Every year there's right around 20,000 earthquakes all, all over the world. It's, a lot of, it's around 55 per day. And these are warning signs. Hey, or reminders. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. It, you know, in December of, uh, of 2022, there was a 6.4 earthquake here in Northern California, in California. Um, in February 6 of 2023, there was a 7.8 earthquake in Turkey. Over 50,000 people died. These are recent earthquakes. And just a few days ago, March 18th of 2023 in Ecuador, there was a 6.8 earthquake. Now, what is the purpose of these earthquakes? Well, the purpose of these earthquakes, according to the scripture today, is to remind us and keep us alert. It's kind of like an alarm that goes off. Reminder, we're in the end times. I am coming back soon. It said there will also be famines. And you'd be thinking in a time like today, there would not be famines. I mean, we could, we got overflow of food, it seems like, especially here in the United States of America. But right now, as we speak, there's over 375 million people that are hungry and are living in food insecure homes. 300. That's the population of the whole United States. You would think that we would have solved this famine problem by now. But the reality is it's also a sign of the end times. Now, Jesus goes on to say that there would also be persecution. Christian persecution. You know, we that live in the United States, we don't see much per Christian persecution, but we're starting to see a resistance to the Christian message today, even in the media, especially as people are becoming more divided than ever. Abortion is an issue. We're dealing with the transgender agenda. We're dealing today with with even what is your gender, what's a male, what's a female, defining marriage. And as we take biblical stances on what the Bible says, we're starting to see already that there's a lot more persecution and there's a lot more resistance to the biblical message. So understand, it's not going to get any better. As we're living, getting closer to the last days or the return of Jesus Christ, we're going to see more and more persecution. But in countries, in other countries, the persecution has already begun. Um, let's say if I came from an Orthodox Jewish family, they might consider me a blasphemer and account me as dead for choosing Jesus. I'd be taken out of their will. If I came from a strict Muslim family, I might be rejected by my family and be literally killed for choosing Jesus. If I came from a Hindu family in India, I could be rejected and martyred for choosing Jesus. In China, I would be allowed to practice Christianity only in the state-sponsored church or be persecuted. My church might be one of the 7,000 destroyed or shut down in the last two years. There's real persecution. Let's talk some more about a little bit more about persecution. Some 165,000 Christians died for their faith in the year 2000. Researchers estimate that since the day of Pentecost, more than 43 million Christians have been killed for their faith. So the, its persecution is happened, but it's also happening now. And we're also going to believe and we're going to see that it's going to continue to increase. What is it? Another sign that Jesus has given us, that he's coming back soon. He goes on to talk about a major event that's going to happen in the future. This event hasn't happened yet. And it's this event that I talked to you about, the abomination of desolation. And let's take a look at this scripture. And it's in verse 14. It says, the day is coming when you will see the sacrilegious object that causes de desecration standing where he should not be and says reader pay attention this is what's describing that there's going to be a day that something that's really desecrating 
is going to happen. And this is going to be the day when the temple is rebuilt, hasn't been rebuilt yet. And then Satan himself, the Antichrist in the form of man, is going to claim to be God. Many people are going to believe him because they don't know scripture. In this period of time, he's going to demand complete allegiance. And this is where the number of the beast comes in, 666. We're seeing even today as our economy is struggling, and they're talking, they're moving more towards digital money. And what they're thinking about is, let's make this a lot easier. You don't have to carry any currency. And we're seeing everything's more on credit, everything's more digital. But there's going to be a time where the enemy, the, the Antichrist, is going to establish a worldwide economy and, and, and worldwide religion. They're going to, he's going to demand that they worship him. And he's going to also say, if you want to eat, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast on your, for, or your hand or on your forehead. So it would be, the technology is already here that you could get a chip in your hand and put it under a scanner and it has all your money, all your bank accounts attached to it. So this probably couldn't, it couldn't have been done back in those days, but now 2,000 years later, the technology is here, getting ready for this event, where Satan can say, if you don't have the mark, you cannot eat. There's going to be those that weren't saved and, aren't, and weren't raptured. And what we mean by that is believers, if Jesus were to come back right now, believers would be caught up in the air with him. But that's not described as a second coming. That's described as the rapture. The second coming is when Jesus finally puts his feet back on the earth. But he's coming at that time, yes, to save those that were in the tribulation and didn't take the mark of the beast and suffered. And many of them were persecuted, had to starve to death and were on the run for all those years and had to go through all the pain and suffering of the tribulation. The tribulation is described as seven years. And in these seven years, the scripture says even here in verse 19, for there will be greater anguish in those days that at any time since, the God, since God created the world and it will never be so great again. It's described as a time of great pain, great suffering. And one of these days, um, maybe we could read the book of Revelations and begin to describe some of the tribulation that they will go through in great suffering. But it's described as the most painful time on earth. And we've seen some great, we've seen some great pain on earth. Of course, we just came out of COVID. There's been world war, world wars where millions of people have died. The bubonic plague where people have, a lot of people have gotten sick and there've been massive famines and torment and tortures of people. And, but it's nothing compared to the great tribulation. This is why Jesus is, is warning us. He says, be ready because there is tr great tribulation coming and I'm your savior. Call on me to save you while there is time. And those that don't call on Jesus today to get saved, this is what's going to happen. They will be left behind and they will have to go through this great tribulation. There will be those that cannot handle the pressure and they're finally going to give in and take the mark of the beast. There are those that will renounce their faith in this time. But the scripture goes on to say, uh, blessed are those, and it's, it's even in this scripture, verse 13, and anyone, it says, but, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And, and that's going to refer to us, but also refer though, to those who are going through this great tribulation. But one of the big signs of Jesus' soon return, or that we're real close, is this abomination, desola abomination of desolation, where the Antichrist, takes a seat in this new new built um, temple and he says that he is god so now this book ends with a warning and he just tells us you don't know when i'm coming so be ready and let's look at this in verse 32 it says however no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen nor nor even the angels in heaven or the Son of Man himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know, 
when that time will come, be on guard and stay alert. We don't know when Jesus is coming back and picking up Christians. The Bible talks about some, one will be left, two will be plowing in the field, one will be left and one will be taken. We don't know when that day is going to happen. It could happen this week. It could happen next week. It could happen a year from now, but we don't know the day. The warning is, since you don't know, be ready. And we should be ready no matter what, because Jesus could come at any time, of course. But also, we could die at any time. And once you leave this earth, it's too late to make a decision. He's warning us, be ready all the time. He ends it with an illustration. The coming of the Son of Man, can, in verse 34, can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return, in the evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone, watch for him. And of course, he's not talking about don't let him catch you sleeping literally. He's talking about don't let him catch you sleeping spiritually. He describes his return as a, as a man that went on a long trip. And the man that's gone on a long trip is Jesus himself. And he's left, he, he left his home. And this home can be, um, it, it's his church. It, it's, it's, it's his church. He's left us his church. He's given us each instructions while we're here. And that's to preach the gospel and make disciples of Jesus Christ. And he's saying, be busy doing these things and live a holy life and live a godly life. So when I come back, I don't catch you sleeping, but I catch you alert and busy doing the Father's business. So in review, there's going to be a temple that's going to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. There's going to be a day that Satan himself is going to come as a man just like Jesus did, and he's going to claim to be God and demand worship. But Jesus is saying there's also going to be some signs before that even happens. There'll be earthquakes, wars, and rumors of wars. There'd be famines. There'd be great persecution. And I believe that we're seeing those signs today before this, this abomination of desolation occurs. We're saying actually the Antichrist comes a physical form and takes the seat of the temple. The reality is the way we build so quickly nowadays, that temple can be built really fast. Uh, the, the Antichrist can be born already. Could we be in those final days? We don't know. We do know this, that there's nothing holding back Jesus from coming back. What, what that means, there's no prophecy that needs to happen before Jesus comes back and takes up his church. I'm excited about that day, but until that day happens, we're going to be busy doing the work of the Lord. If you've listened today and you're saying, you know, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm ready, but I want to make sure I'm ready because Jesus could come any day or I could die at any moment. And that's the reality. The Bible says to each man is appointed a day to die. We all have an appointment. And for some of us, it could be that you get sick and you have time to get ready. But for many, it might just be a moment. It could be an accident. It could be your heart just stops. And if that were to happen, are you sure that you're saved? Are you sure that you're born again? Are you sure that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? This is your moment. Are you ready to accept Jesus as your Savior? You can do it right now. Let's pray. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I know I'm a sinner and I need you to save me. I believe that you died on the cross. You suffered to pay the price for the wrong I've done. But I also believe you rose from the dead. You conquered death, my greatest enemy. I'm asking you now to come into my heart, save me, and I receive your free gift of eternal life. From this day forward, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. 
and I will follow you for the rest of my life. I'm saved. I'm born again. I have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it, congratulations. You are saved. And you're ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. We love you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.